Today on Judge Faith, this rapper wanted to fly with Air Jordan. I was trying to be a show off. That's what rappers do, right? They have yeah. the cash, the car. But his stepdad's valuable shoe collection was lifted instead. You take a lunch break. When I come back, shoes are missing. If you only knew how I felt about my shoes, like it. Tell me about your shoes. <laughs> And later, a tenant says her business got soggy in an unsafe building. And my husband and I spent quite a bit of money, and he spent a lot of time up on the roof putting the, the roof patch up there. Every time they told us there was a leak, he'd get up there. The leaks were coming straight onto our lights, so this could very easily catch fire at any time. You say that she made certain alterations. She wasn't allowed to do that. We couldn't re-rent the building like that. The main reason you wanted to leave was that the business wasn't doing well, and it just wasn't working out. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Nigel Durham claims his precious collection of Nike Air Jordan shoes took flight during a rap music video shoot. He is suing for $5,000. He is joined by his wife, Jacqueline Durham, who's also the defendant's mother. Defendant Dimitri Sanders says he was very close to the plaintiff, who should have kept a closer eye on his Nike shoe collection. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Durham versus Sanders. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Nigel Durham. Yes, ma'am. You are suing your stepson. Yes, ma'am. Denitri Sanders for $5,000, the value of a collectible Air Jordan shoes that you had? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and Jacqueline Durham, you're his mother? Yes. Okay. So we'll start with you, Nigel. What's going on here? Okay, so the reason why I had the defendant here today is because... <laughs> your stepson? Yeah, he... Okay. He, he came in here, he came to me and um, he needed some of my shoes for his video idea. What he, kind of like, video? Some video where he wanted so to just be video. like, yeah, music, yeah, because he's like an aspiring artist, rap artist. Okay. So he wanted to use my shoes, my, my Jordan collection as props. But he wanted like a different shoe in every different scene or whatever, to my understanding. So. <sighs> Like, if you only knew how I felt about my shoes, tell like... Me, it, tell me about your shoes. Like, <laughs> okay, I, I've been collecting Jordans since I was, like, 15. Like, that was when I was able to get my first pair and of my own. how old are you now? I'm 35 now. Okay. So it's been a good while. I want these shoes ever since I was, like, in, like, elementary school. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't until I was 15 until I could actually get a pair of my own because my mom couldn't afford them. Mm -hmm. So it's like a real passion of mine. Like, nobody will ever understand how I feel about them. You know what I'm saying? How many pairs of shoes did you have in this collection? I had like 30, 30, 30 plus laying around. 30 pairs. You know, pretty much all my shoes look almost brand new. They were all brand new. They were pretty much never worn. So you seem to know a lot about this passion. Yes, I his. do. I how know a lot How long have the two of you been married? We've been married for uh, 12 years. Okay. I was the one out in the Jordan line getting pushed over and jumped over and you know, and just ran down to get these shoes. I sat out in 12 degree, you know. Because he had to be one of the first people to you have, have the shoes. To be, you have to be, yes. You had to get them on release date or you weren't getting them at all. Yeah. Um, they were very valuable. Once once they're sold, they're gone. So what would you do? You would get up at like 4 o'clock in the you morning? Would, no, you have to be four, out four, at 4 o'clock. It's no, not getting up at we, 4. You, <laughs> you're getting up at 4, you're not going to get them shoes. You have to be out. She had to you have to be in line. Early as I don't know what. She, she didn't have to work like me. This sounds like my sister's the day after Thanksgiving <laughs> sale, when you have to be out at 4 o'clock in the morning yes. in the long lines. Okay. You have to be, and you have to be strong because you will get as a woman being out there as a woman so you're being taking out there, one for the team oh yes the shoes yes yes and i was out there every single release day getting every jordan but i'm doing it for the man that i love he want them i'm getting them she wow, wow. <laughs> Yana, she goes through a whole lot too i see what she okay goes so through. what happened to the shoes you, you you're here today because you said he lost them something happened to them what happened he came to me actually and asked me you know, do I think that Nigel will let him, you know, mom, do you think Nigel will let me use his shoes in the video? And you said no? And I said no. I said, but you know, you can ask him. So when he asked him, you know, I had prodded him a little bit like, babe, you know, let him use the shoes. Okay, why did you need all those shoes for your rap video? 
I mean, I was, the, all the rappers I see on the videos, they're wearing like t-shirts and jeans. L Lil Wayne doesn't even wear a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why do you need all these shoes? Basically, I was trying to be a show off. Um, I was putting on that I had the material things that I was showing off in my videos, and that was one of the main reasons that, why. That's what rappers do, right? They have yeah. the cash, the cars, and then you, so you're going to have your shoes. That's yeah. going to be your thing. All right. Go ahead. How long have you been rapping? Um, since I was about 14 or 15. All right, and do you, have you had any success? In, how old are you now? I'm 23. Um, in my local area, yes, I have had a lot of success. Where's your local area? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. What's your rap name? Um, Rax Blown. Okay, are you part of a group or are you solo? Um, just solo. Tell me about the video you were shooting on this particular day and what happened with the shoes. The video shoot took about two or three days. So the first day of the video shoot, I wore a pair of the Jordans and we got one scene of the video done. So where are all the shoes while you're out there rapping and starring in the show? They're in a trunk, like a treasure chest, but there is a big trunk with clothes and, and the shoes in it and clothes and everything that's just sitting there in the corner. That's where it's located at. Like, we can see it. Everybody in the room can see it. So on the second Maybe that day, was the problem, right? And that was that's the problem. Yeah, that, yeah. So that, what that happened? have been a problem. The second day of the video shoot, we, we take a lunch break. Um, basically, when I come back, the shoes are missing and the whole trunk is just missing with clothes in it and other material things that were on the inside. Okay, and how did that happen? Me and my entourage went to lunch <laughs> and we left the warehouse unattended. There's no so you, to So you a, didn't a go to lunch. Crowd. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So you have an entourage. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and all of you have to go to lunch at the same time? Yes, ma'am. And leave all the things in the warehouse. You and your entourage went to lunch. Coming up on Judge Faith, did the shoes just walk away on their own? Did you call the police? No, I didn't. Why? I'm... On his crowd of people. No, I did not. Because you don't want to snitch. I I snitch. Yeah. You're just reporting a crime to the police so they can investigate. And later, do leaks give this tenant a way out? Was the building up to code? I didn't feel it was safe. The basements do get water when there is a lot of rain. But did she report any of these issues to you? Plaintiff Nigel Durham says his stepson let his expensive Air Nike collection float away during a music video shoot. Defendant Denitri Sanders claims his stepdad was there and should have been more aware. Okay, let's look at these. Wow, these are a lot of shoes. Wow, let's look at the next one. So what happened when you and the entourage come back from lunch? I asked around, has anybody seen the chest? So everyone is acting like they don't know what's going on, so I get the... Did you Who's call the missing? police? No, I didn't. Why? I'm, On his crowd of people. No, I did not. Because be you don't want to snitch. I no, hate yeah. I mean, you don't even know who did it. You're not really snitching. You're just reporting a crime to the police so they can investigate. They have a few more investigatory tools than you do, is what I'm saying. You could have made better efforts to find the shoes, and you surely, at 23 years old, need to be adult enough to call your dad and say, hey, look, this is what happened, instead of dodging him. It's not responsible so, at all. So, what has happened since then? Because this is the part that kind of bothers me. I understand that the two of you, you have not spoken to him no. in two months. No. Why? Because it's been volatile. How are you going to prove to me that these shoes were worth what you're saying that they were worth? Do you I mean, have receipts? I, I have, we have, I receipts. have receipts. Let me see the receipts. And the and the way Jordans are, the value goes up. You know, the value goes the, up. They're like, the they're like goes, after release, they're like they go comic up. books or or baseball cards. They go up. I can't consider anything else in terms of uh, if they increase in value over time because I would just be speculating about that without any evidence from you, and I'm not going to do that, okay? Listen, if you want to wear Jordans and you want to be like Mike, I think that's fine, but I think you have to also look at Michael Jordan's career and what he's been able to accomplish, and he did that by working hard and not cutting corners. So many young people, they want to rap, they want to get the fast cash and make money and be famous and popular, but I'm telling you, it's also a wise choice for you to have a backup plan. You understand? <laughs> in terms of in, t in terms of your family dynamic, mom, I'm speaking to you, stepdad, I'm speaking to you. They are shoes at the end of the day. They are sneakers. And you have a son who is healthy 
and mm -hmm. who is whole, he's still growing. This is no reason for you to ban him from family functions. I'm looking at things in your complaint and stop speaking to him for months on end. He needs to be taught a lesson, but it doesn't need to be that severe. So I hope that you guys can work this out. Judgment for the plaintiff in this case, $3,741.37. Plaintiff and landlord Renee Helton is suing for $2,000 in unpaid rent and unapproved alterations made to a consignment store. Defendant Crystal Sale says the roof sagged and her business suffered. Renee Helton, you were suing the defendant Crystal Sales for $2,000. You say she owes you for unpaid rent, cleaning, and repairs. And damages, yes. And damages. You rented a consignment store from the plaintiff? Um, the building, yes. Okay, for how long? Um, we were there close to a year. It okay. was my second location. Okay. Ms. Hilton, why don't we start with you and you tell me about the building and when you purchased it. My husband and I purchased the building in February of this year. Crystal and I both occupied one of the units. It's a four-unit building. As tenants, we got along very well together. We were right next door to each other. Okay, so you took over the building in February of 2014, and then, I, as I understand it, you gave notice. Yes. To because you wanted to leave early and vacate your lease early. I did. Tell me about that. Um, you know, we had a lot of issues with the building. Um, we had numerous leaks all over the place, so it became an issue where I was to the point where I was just. I didn't feel it was safe. So was the building up to code? Um, the basements do get water when there is a lot of rain. But did she report any of these issues to you? The leaks in the roof she did, mm -hmm. and my husband and I spent quite a bit of money, and uh, he spent a lot of time up on the roof putting the, the roof patch up there. Every time they told us there was a leak, he'd get up there. The leaks were coming straight onto our light, so this could very easily catch fire at any time. And so she reported some of these issues to you and you were in the process of trying to we fix it? We were trying them. to fix it. You know, like I said, we just bought the building in February. Mm -hmm. We can't do everything overnight. Right. And Crystal had to have been aware of a lot of these things prior to us becoming owners of the building. When was the lease set to expire? I think the lease was set to expire August 15th. But you agreed to allow her to leave early, right? No, no. She told me she was leaving early. Then on the same day that I got that text message or email, she sent me another message saying that her brother and his girlfriend, I believe, were going to buy the business from her. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have two questions for sure. you. First, did you tell her in the email that the reason, the main reason you wanted to leave early and vacate the premises early was that the business wasn't doing well and it just wasn't working out? I just said that things weren't working out. The second question I have is, did you communicate to Ms. Hilton that other relatives may be taking over the business? I said, I said there was a thought of it and that I would try to do my best to maybe help her find somebody. I did find her somebody. Okay. They happened to not want my building at the time because there was just far too much work that needed to be done. Okay. Um, let, let me take a look at the photos that sure. you submitted. Okay, what is this that about? is um, that is water damage, and you see the crack in there. We came in numerous days to those completely cracked and on the floor. Um, okay, next and I photo. would replace them. That is, you can see where ceiling tiles are missing. Those are fluorescent lights. You can see water sitting in those. The water is falling from the roof to the insulation. Is this what it looked like when Miss Sales vacated the unit? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's go to the next photo. That is a crashed tile uh, that we came into numerous mornings. We had to put place buckets on our counters every day. We had to move our important things away from the counter. Every this was all night. inside of the store? This is inside of the store, yeah. All right, you submitted photos as well? Yes, I did. May I see those, please? Coming up on Judge Faith, did distressed designs in the store stress out future renters? You were giving the verbal okay to make certain alterations, yes. but did you get them in writing? Plaintiff Renee Helton says she rented the defendant a consignment store, but the colorful alterations made it impossible to rent again. She's suing for unpaid rent, cleaning, and repairs. Defendant Crystal Sales claims the old roof leaked, so ceiling tiles and water cascaded onto consignments. You say that she made certain alterations Correct. to her unit, and she wasn't allowed to do that. 
and you I had to go know. in and make corrections. I couldn't say if she was allowed to make that. I was told I could do, the building was for sale, had been vacant for over five years. The building was a, a mess. The mm -hmm. paint was uh, two different colors. You said that you were given the verbal okay to make certain alterations, yes. but did you get them in writing? Because according to your lease, you're not supposed to make any alterations or additions to the premises without the written consent of the landlord. And we spoke and she told me it was fine. She told me she didn't care what, I said, you know, my business, I use bright colors. And what's the issue with, because these are your photos, what's the issue with the alterations that were done? What is this? That, I'm, I think it's drywall mud mm -hmm. that was tinted to, um, there was about a three little about a three foot space above the wall, the, the top spot, that Crystal wanted to give a distressed look to. And in her building, you know, it did well. But that being dry like that, we we couldn't re-rent the building like that. Okay, it might let's look at her. the next photo. That is actually on oh, paneling. Okay, so this is like a okay. And that's actually on paneling. Uh, so that's not brick at the top? No, that's fake brick paneling. Okay. The paneling was so torn up because we had ripped two layers of wallpaper off and the paneling was pretty tore up. So we decided just to put some of the spackle, tinted spackling, give it like a distressed look. It's in okay, a historic downtown. Okay, I understand downtown. that. What is the issue with, um, you, you're, but you're suing, a part of your lawsuit is you had to try to remove all of this. It, it wouldn't come off. Okay. A, a piece about this big, my husband got on a ladder, he was scraping it. It took about 20 minutes just to scrape one spot off. So what did it's, you have to do? We ended up buying paneling again, um, a white paneling, to put all around the top. But that's paneling. It would have Let's had go to, to come the next down photo. What is this? That's garbage that was left in the basement. Okay, you left this garbage in the basement? I left that garbage in there. Those are boxes. Why? That I had saved to put all of our hangers and things in to move. Um, when I went to move them, those boxes were soaking wet. We have no dumpsters. I was not going to load soaking wet boxes into my car. Okay, but it's not her responsibility either because it's not her responsibility to clean up that kind of trash. Okay, next photo. What is this? She left boxes and boxes of hangers like that. So you said that this photo is sort of a representative of, of things that she left in, in the unit. I did leave everything in the building that was there when I moved in listen, because I didn't think that you, was my... Listen, you can come in court and say that, but mm -hmm. I don't know that, okay? I think that's a pretty convenient excuse. Okay. But you cannot leave all of the trash in your unit, things that you don't want, and expect her to have to clean it up. So you're going to pay for cleaning expenses. And now, Judge Faith rules. Looks like you left a lot of trash behind. Now, when you moved out, you... And my understanding is you told Ms. Helton that she could keep your security deposit? Yes. Okay, and why did you tell her she could keep that? Because on, when we decided we moved out, I had a half a month, the 15 days or whatever, from the time that uh, my rent was due from the time I moved out. So I just asked her, I said, you have my security deposit, correct? And she said yes, and I just told her to keep it. So you still owed a half month's rent because you moved out in the yes. middle of the month? Yes. Why are you asking her to pay for rent for July 16th through August 15th. Because You're asking her, for another month of rent. Her Why? lease was actually due on or up on August 16th and there was no way we could have re-rented that building. Okay, so here's what we have. I'm ordering you to pay the two months of rent that you still owed under the lease when you breached because I do find that you're in fault for breaching the lease. I am also ordering you to pay for a few damages but not everything you have listed here based on the condition of the building when she leased that unit. I am ordering you to pay for the cleaning and garbage removal. You left way too much trash behind. I'm ordering you to pay for the painting and the paneling that they had to purchase to cover the walls and the distressed look you, which I like by the way. I thought it was a good <laughs> look you. but they don't like it and they have to have it ready for someone else to lease and I'm not ordering you to pay for the water bill because I'm not sure what the issue is with the water there's clearly an issue and I'm not sure if it's pipes from raining I don't know so I'm not ordering her to pay that so the total amount that I'm ordering you to pay is one thousand six hundred and twenty two dollars and sixty nine cents but I'm subtracting the five hundred dollar security deposit that you left behind so the total judgment in this case is for the plaintiff one thousand one hundred twenty two dollars and sixty nine cents Thirty for the plaintiff good luck thank you
If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.